Hi, welcome back to Detailing World, and in today's video we're going to be detailing a BMW 3 Series Touring. Hi, yeah, so welcome back if this is your first time here. My name is Matt, and as I say, today we're going to be looking at detailing a BMW 3 Series. Um, this is a 2014 model, it's a Touring in silver. Um, and we'll take a quick look around it in a moment, as you'll notice in the video in a sec. It is raining, it is planned to be bucketing it down today. I've got it for the entire weekend, so the plan is today, Saturday, uh, give it a wash. It helps if your neighbours already think you're a bit crackers to be washing in the rain. Um, get it all decontaminated, so tar removers, iron removers, clay bar, um, do the wheels. And then, yeah, get it ready for polishing tomorrow. Um, there's some scratches down the sides of the car apparently, I've not had a chance to look around it yet um, but apparently it's been dragged through a bush. Uh, the owner's had this car uh, since Christmas time I think, or the new year. Um, there's a few other marks from the last owner, I think there's some dents in the roof, there's always to try putting a roof rack on, we'll have a look at that. We're also going to be taking a look at a few new products, let me just grab them. So yeah, we've got a selection of brushes here from Workstuff, along with the Gentleman microfiber cloth, the Storm wash mitt, and a new tyre applicator as well. So yeah, we'll be checking them out later on. Um, I'm also going to be doing most of the polishing. I'm going to be testing out the two new Sonax products. So we've got the Cut and Finish, and we've got the EX0406 as well. Um, these are both designed, I believe, to work with the DA. Normally I would do any correction work on a rotary, but today I'm going to be picking up the Megs G220 and we'll do some correction with that and see how we get on with those. So yeah, we'll just go take a quick look around the car now. So yeah, there we go, that's the first look around the car. Um, apologies, there's not much before footage. It's a silver car, it's raining, and you can't really see much dirt or even the scratches that he's mentioned running down the side of the car. Um, you, you know, just seeing the wheels, the wheels could do a good clean. Um, something like the RRC Customs wheel gel will probably tackle that, or Car Pros Iron X. Um, but we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, so yeah, I think. Really today, I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to clean it, so apologies in advance if I don't get much footage of me cleaning it. It's raining, but I'm going to put a rain cover on this camera. Um, I may switch to the GoPro as well, just in case you notice any colour difference. So yeah, first thing to do is get changed into something a bit more suitable, a bit warm, because it's actually quite fresh out there, um, and make a brew. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get cracking and come take a look and see what we do.
Right, so that's the car washed and rinsed off now. That's the bodywork and the wheels. Um, as you probably noticed there, I wash the. I always start by washing the windows and then uh, bonnet and then roof and top down. As you probably noticed there, I got to like the roof and realised I'd not rinsed the snow foam. I think I was too excited trying out the work stuff. stuff. Um, so yeah, speaking of that, again, thanks to Richard at Detail R for sending those bits and bobs out for us. Um, so far, I've only used the black um, detail brush and the thicker of the um, general detailing brushes, you know, the beige coloured ones. Uh, I do like them, you can feel the black ones, they are quite stiff bristles, they're much stiffer than the albino brushes with the bristles on that. Um, the only downside, if it's a downside, is it's polished, you know, it's a very like lacquered plastic texture. Now I've got other plastic brushes, um, this one here, this one's a little, a little bit grippy, um, I don't know if you can really tell, but that one reflects a bit more light, it's a bit shinier. Um, I know this is black, it's probably a terrible example. Um, and it may be because I had gloves on, but this, this was slipping. Um, the bigger one, chunkier handle, that was better, to be fair, and I was using that, I think, bare hands as well. But if you've got soap and all-purpose clean on your hands, they're a little bit slippy, but hey-ho. I think also the black one, it's probably a bit too small. Um, for the what I was doing on the wheels, I probably you know could have done with the I think 40 mil. I think is the biggest to do in a 26 mil. And this black one is a 12 mil. And um, so right now it feels absolutely fine. But when you've got soap or if you're wearing gloves, the brush gets wet because I was chucking it in the bucket. Um, if you used to keep this dry, then grit wouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, if the brush handle is wet and your hands are wet or covered in soap, whatever. I was it was slipping a bit. Um, I don't know what you can do about that one, if you can make that a textured finish or something, um, but it does look very nice in the polish style. Onto the wash mitt, it's the first time I've used a microfiber wash mitt like that. I've used the noodle mitts in the past, I think we all have, um, but my god, that was drinking buckets and buckets of water. I think I had to fill up the bucket a couple of times with the pressure washer. So that was just, you know, after doing like the bonnet, I was trying to squeeze a bit of the water out into the book, back into the bucket in the clean bucket. How many times can we say bucket? So yeah, you have to be a bit mindful of that the, the mitt itself is going to soak up a lot of water. So you may want to dunk it, you can feel the bubbles and it's soaking up as you do when you put a sponge in the bath or whatever. And um, you know, you feel all the bubbles coming out of it. So it's really is soaking up the, the water and the soapy water from out of the bucket. Um, like I said, the downside is it just eats through water. Um, but no, I was really good using that. I tried using it as a mitt. Um, everything I have is a mitt, but I never use it. I just, I'd much rather use it as a pad and just flip it over. I probably should actually try some wash pads. Um, yeah, because I, I very rarely use it as a gloved mitt. So yeah, as I said, it's all washed and rinsed now. Um, as expected, both neighbours have either gone out or come back home. Um, yeah, and they did a comment. I was a bit crackers washing in the rain. Fortunately though, as you've probably seen from these shots, I think I've pretty much escaped a lot of the rain. Uh, we've had spits here and there. Um, speaking of which, few tips if you are needing to detail in the rain, really you shouldn't, you know, who needs to wash a car in the rain, yeah, um, unless you're getting paid to do it, it's your job, whatever, um, or you really, really must give it a clean. Just take precautions, you know, keep your electrics covered out of water. So I've got the electric for the pressure washer, it's just right at the edge of the garage, garage doors covering it, it's in a plastic bag as well covering it. And then I've got some um, like rubber matting over it as well, so that isn't getting wet at all. The pressure washer itself, again, I've got a bin liner over the top of that, um, taped up so it doesn't blow off. And then I've got an old golf umbrella just covering it as well, so that's not going to be getting wet either. Um, and that's up against the gate as well, so there's only one side the rain can get to it, and it, it ain't going to get to it, <laughs> just from where everything else, all the other buildings are. So yeah, next up is the decontamination process. Um, and we'll see what else can get done today. That's a good couple of hours so far, just doing the wheels and the bodywork. And I can, don't know if you can hear that, the rain's coming down now. So make another brew and yeah, decontamination time.
right, so that's all the decontamination done on the car. Now I got quite lucky. Um, it was supposed to be in torrential rain from sort of like 11 o'clock onwards. Um, really, we just had spits of rain, um, particularly whilst we're doing the tar and iron remover. So it had sort of two or three hits with tar remover. Um, I think maybe two hits with the iron iron X from CarPro. Um, so by the time I'd done that, I had another coffee. Um, got up. I can hear the wind now. So by the time I'd done that, I had a coffee and then got onto clay and the sun came out. You know, it was supposed to be dark clouds today, so I'm quite lucky. It's still been spitting with rain, so I've been quite limited with camera movements just because of the rain cover gets in way of the screen and yeah, it's even more fiddly than normal. So apologies for lack of angles and whatnot. So yeah, it's all been clayed as well now, that's all done. Um, so now I'm just going to jump on and give the interior of the car a quick clean. As I say, it's still raining a bit, it's just spitting now, but you may be able to hear that wind. It's really blowing outside now. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to record anymore now. Like I said, I'm just going to tidy up the interior of the car. Tomorrow, um, Sunday, I'm going to be up early and we'll make a start on polishing the car and we'll have a look a bit more on that. One thing I did notice though, um, the owner did mention that the wheels have had a refurb. I don't think he's happy with the refurb. I'm not sure if he paid for it or they did it when he bought the car. Um, you can see little pigtails around the rims. It's a nice car. Oh, the alloy refurb should be spot on, but hey ho. So yeah, um, I'll get back to you tomorrow then um, when we'll be starting on some machine work. Morning, so we're on to day two now, it's Sunday. Um, all that rain we expected yesterday, it came at about half eight, nine o'clock last night. It absolutely bucketed it down. Um, so this morning the car's had a rinse off, it's been wiped down and then dried as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can get rid of that boring, depressing music, put on some jolly music and let's get out there and tape up and stop polishing. Right, so just stopping for a quick coffee break now. I've um, done all the large panels that I can with the uh, bigger pads. So as some of you may have noticed, I did say yesterday or you know five, 10 minutes ago in the video, I was gonna be reviewing the Sonax polishing products I had sent. Um, I did test them on the bonnet, but then I just thought it was a bit unfair of me um, to be reviewing them on a silver car, um, particularly because it's quite hard to capture the defects and see how much of an improvement it has made. Um, plus, I've really got a crack on with this, so I can't be messing about too much. So that review and testing those products will come probably in a few weeks. I'll test on my car, you know, a dark colour. So yeah. Um, so instead, I've switched to the 3M combo. Um, the yellow pad seems to be working quite well. Actually, getting a lot of the uh, swirl marks out of there with the yellow polish as well. Um, so as I say, I've just taken a quick break to swap pads over. I'm gonna put the spot pad on and do like the wings, the boot lid, and some of the smaller areas around the front of the roof, in front of the sunroof that's on there. Um, and then we'll go over with the blue finishing pad and the blue polish, um, maybe on the DA, um, and just give that, you know, get the entire car finished down with that. And again, that'll be the larger pads and the smaller spot pads as well. Um, so yeah, coffee break now, and then we'll get back onto it.
so that's all the polishing done then. Um, I didn't get any footage of the finishing stages. There were some clouds that had come over, so I thought it was going to rain, so I just wanted to get that cracked on with. Um, but yeah, I finished it off with the Megs G220DA with a 3M blue pad and the 3M blue polish, the Ultrafina. Um, it's just had a full IPA wipe down as well to get rid of any oils and fillers and all that jazz. Um, so the owner's coming to collect in about three hours. So I've just got to wax the car. I'm going to be using the detailed online Surreal Wax, which is the ceramic infused paste wax. Um, give it two coats of that. Uh, the exhaust do need polishing up as well, so we'll give that a look. Uh, probably have to get the Dremel out for that. I hate doing exhaust. Um, a coating on the wheels as well. I'll probably use the ceramic wax on that as well. Um, then all the tyres, the plastics, they all need dressing. Um, the, the wiper arms and that, they're a bit faded, so we'll get some trim restore on those. Clean, clean all the glass up and apply some rain next or something. So yeah, and then a final dusting down. And before I crack on, if you're enjoying this, then make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, then please do consider subscribing to this channel. It really does help us out as well. Um, so yeah, let's get these finishing touches done with. Right, so there we go, that's it all done and handed back to the owner. Um, as I say, it's had two coats of Surreal Wax from Detailed Online, so that's the Ceramic Infused Wax, and they also apply that to the wheels as well there. Um, we'll just take a quick look in a moment at some of the after shots. It's a bit difficult to get really good after footage shots on silver paintwork, it's just one of those colours. Um, but yeah, again, if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure you smash that like button and then subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Um, I'll be doing some more of these hopefully as well, um, I'll be doing, I've got some more how to's lined up and everything as well and yeah some of you may have noticed I did give the garage a paint so <laughs> it does look a bit better in here, um, it just needs a bit of soundproofing now but yeah so we'll roll some after footage and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> 